family has been providing trusted funerals since 1943, when Joseph and Adele Fish bought Remsen's only funeral home. Beginning in 1976, Joe's son Joel and his wife Jean continued the tradition of being a family-owned and operated business. In 2009, David and Elizabeth Fish carried the family tradition into the future and now offer monuments. The Fish family is honored to assist you in your time of need, offering care and compassion. Fish Funeral Home and Monuments in Remsen, our family serving your family since 1943. Gangler Feed Service in Remsen is your complete farm store. We feed all farm species and we're a Hubbard, Kent and Big Game dealer. Whether it's sprayers, grain banking, corn drying or feeding your animals, we're your complete farm store and service is our business. Gangler Feed Service in Remsen. Call them at 786-2234 or stop in and see them. Service is our business at Gangler Feed Store, Remsen. And welcome to Lamar's Community High School. It is sub-state class 1A basketball action here in Lamar's tonight as the Remsen St. Mary's Hawks are taking on the Lamar's Galen Catholic Jays. I'm Tim Holmes alongside Matt Schilling tonight and Mason on production. This is the Fuller Digital Solutions pregame show live from the Lamar's Community High School Gymnasium. Remsen St. Mary's looking for their seventh state trip in a row. The Hawks come into this one 21 and two on the season. They're led by senior guard Jackson Bunkers. Bunkers averaging about 16 points a ball game and sophomore post player Colin Holman taking a large step this year averaging 15 points per night to go along with eight rebounds to lead the Hawks. Galen Catholic led by do-it-all guard Keaton Bonderson the senior averaging 23 points per night. Drake DeRocher also a senior classmate he chips in 11 Bonderson coming off a 40-point effort in a win against Newell Fonda on Tuesday night over in Cherokee. The Jays came out victorious in that one, 79-77. Galen Catholic 20-5 on the season coming into this. This the third meeting between these two squads. The Hawks won the first meeting at Galen back on December 20th. The Jays return the favor in Remsen on January 10th and a 57-51 win over Remsen St. Mary's, giving the Hawks one of their two losses. We're going to head to a commercial break. We'll be back with more of the Fuller Di Digital Solutions pregame show after this right here on FDS. All the best sports shows, all the best games on 101.5 FM and 1570 AM for your college sports, University of South Dakota. For NHL coverage, Minnesota Wild. For NBA coverage, Minnesota Timberwolves. For MLB coverage, Chicago Cubs. And the best games in both college and the pros with the ESPN Radio featured games. Never miss out on the action. Rural customers deserve great internet too. This is Doug from Evertech. You deserve Evertech's No Limits Internet and the personal service that comes with it. We've dedicated 32 years to bringing customers like you reliable, unlimited internet. It's internet you can count on. Call or email our Everly office to get started. You and your family need internet with unlimited use, no contracts, and no overages. You need Evertech. Visit evertech.net to learn more. Evertech, internet where you live. Sitzman Construction, Lamar's, general contractors you can trust with the job you need done, when you need it done. Call Jeremy at Sitzman Construction when you need a remodel or a complete build, and they work with DPS Buildings. Jeremy takes the time to know what you need. Past clients say he's reliable, honest, fair-minded, and reasonably priced. Contact Jeremy at Sitzman Construction. Jeremy and his crew will satisfy all of your construction needs. 712-540-2731. When you go home, you'll feel good about what you did. And you know, you're doing it for the kids. If they don't have us, they don't have these games.
KCHE Sports, and we're joined with the Galen Catholic head coach, Coach Langle, and thanks for joining us today. And Coach, uh, you guys obviously playing Rims and St. Mary's here in this regional final game to go to state. And Coach, you guys have had a great year, 20-5 and five overall, played some uh, tough teams, had a really good schedule, your team's battle-tested. So just your uh, overall thoughts here as we get going on your season that you've had so far. Yeah, I think we have. We've, we've worked hard all season long, and we've had we've played in the War Eagle Conference, and, and night in and night out, really, you got to be prepared to play and win, and, and uh, so that, that kind of gets you ready for the postseason, and uh, so it's going to come down to two War Eagle teams in the sub-state, and uh, with Remsen and us, and uh, uh, it should be interesting. We've played each other, we've played Remsen twice now this year, and split with them, so it should be should be a heck of a ball game. Sure should be, and, and you guys know each other well, Coach, and, and you're kind of a rival with each other. Uh, you played uh, twice this year, back in December, and then now uh, in January, and you guys split those yeah. games. So, Coach, uh, you know, heading into this third matchup, knowing each other really well, uh, what are what are some things you guys need to do well to, to win this game? Obviously, the, the obvious question answer is uh, shoot the ball well, you know, that, that's the big thing when you shoot the ball well you know your defense plays a little better and you know things work better but I think defensively uh, they have five five players that, that score for near double digits their top five are really tough and we have to just kind of defensively uh, play, them, play them straight up and hopefully we're we're good enough to get them stopped and uh, the Holman kid and Bunkers kid uh, are, are big parts of their offense and those two guys will will definitely be uh, working really hard at, at keeping them in check. And coach, that uh, you know, obviously stopping their offense, and they, they they like to play defense too. But you you have a really uh, senior laden team here with you know Keaton Bonnerson kind of leading you guys in scoring, but uh, a nice group of uh, veteran players on your team as well, coach. Yeah, we do. We have ten seniors, and uh, of course, not all of them play, but the the kids that don't play are very supportive, and uh, and uh, we played in the sub state against Remsen two years ago with the the same group with missing a couple guys that have graduated but these guys have, have been there and uh, so hopefully you know when they're seniors now they can they can step up to the challenge and uh, maybe maybe get a W out of it. Nice to have that experience on your team that has been there before and kind of used to that big game environment going into a big game like that it, you always get a little nerves you know always nice to have been there before. Coach Lango uh, we wish you the best of luck on Saturday night it should be a great ball game from Lamar's there and I uh, appreciate your time today yep it'll be a fun game i'm sure it'll be packed full and a lot of participation from the crowd Westel offers faster internet speeds for your new devices. The new year's begun, and your home may have new internet-connected devices. Maybe Santa brought your children new phones, tablets, or a gaming console. Or maybe you used holiday money to finally purchase the new computer or smart home devices you've been wanting. The more devices, the more speed you need, along with a quality router to support them. To enjoy the best internet experience, call Westel at 712-786-1181 to upgrade to a new internet speed and a Westel-managed Wi-Fi router. Staying healthy means enjoying life's best moments. And the best way to stay healthy is to make your routine appointments. Whether you have new symptoms or it's time for your annual exam, the providers at Floyd Valley Healthcare know and listen to you, so you'll get the care that you need. We help you stay healthy by providing preventative care, finding health concerns early, managing chronic conditions, and connecting you with specialty care close to home. Don't miss a single special moment. Make your appointment today. I'm Dr. Brooke Kahns. I'm a new general surgeon at Floyd Valley Healthcare, and I look forward to working with the community. The Rams and Farmers Co-op has been serving you for over a century. They are a full-service co-op providing area livestock producers with land of lakes and canned feed. And take advantage of their full-service agronomy center for all your crop production needs to maximize your yield. They also buy and sell grain and offer grain drying. Rams and Farmers Co-op with years of experience and ready for the future.
it out, click it out. Try it. I think you really like it. I, mean, I tried it, and so here I am 17 years later. I, I love it. Kyle Jorgensen with KCHE Sports, uh, joined by Scott Rudin, co-head coach of the Rims and St. Mary's Boys uh, basketball team. And Coach Rudin, first off, I want to congratulate you guys on having another uh, fantastic season, 21-2 and two overall. And here you are in another regional final. And Coach, uh, taking on a very familiar opponent in Galen Catholic. So uh, just talk about your games that you had against them this year uh, so far. You guys kind of split those two. Yeah, yep, we're very familiar with Galen. Probably one of the biggest rivalries we have uh, it's always fun playing them. Well, through the years, uh, we've won some we shouldn't have. They beat us a couple times and they shouldn't have. And so it's going to be a big match. This year, we played them early in the season before Christmas. Beat them, I think, by 10 or 12. Played really well. And then after Christmas, we uh, lost Alex Schrader, one of our starters, and lost Sam Schmellen for the season. Kind of had to rebuild a little bit. And uh, so they got us at our place by six in that game. We did get Alex Schrader back now. We're playing a lot better basketball, and so are they. They are playing really well right now, too. And so it's going to be a good matchup, really good matchup. You bet. Definitely looking forward to kind of the, the rubber match, whatever they want to call it, uh, going into this game. But obviously this is a big game with a trip to state on the line. And Coach, you know, looking at the stats here, you guys are pretty uh, comparable for a lot of things. Uh, you both average in the 60s for points. You know, looking at defense, points again, Scalin gives up 52. You guys give up 42 points per game. So Got to think you're going to hang your hat on defense here in this game. Oh, most definitely. We are. We, uh, we have all of the prior years uh, we've made it that is definitely will be our game plan for the game tomorrow night we uh bonderson had a uh free run against Newell Fonda and put up 40 and uh, we're going to make sure that doesn't happen and we're going to rely on defense and uh, guard them hard and uh, I'm sure they're going to you know they may allow a few points more than us but come this game I'm sure their energy level they're going to probably guard pretty hard too so we're going to get prepared for it it'll be fun and it's going to be a little bit of strategy they're well coached like you said we've seen each other so much that uh, you got to have some kind of wrinkle that they're not going to know and so we'll have to find out what they got for us and we got a couple ideas for them and, and then hopefully the kids just play to the best of their ability that's all you ask for in a, big, in a big game like that, you want to go out with a victory, no doubt, but you don't want to lose by playing bad. You want to play the best you can play. One thing you uh, had mentioned in, for that South O'Brien game, you guys wanted to get off to a fast start. You said that was kind of a goal of yours to get off to a quick start. Some of the games this year, you felt like maybe you could have gotten off to some better starts. Got to think that's another thing that coming into this game, you guys want to get off to a quick start again. Yeah, we do. We just uh, we, we, we did make that a point of emphasis the last year during tournament. Uh, we start uh, some of the games the season giving people six seven point uh, leads and uh, then have to climb back and, and win it and uh, we just want to get a good quick start and execute right off the bat and that just takes mental focus we've been working on it in practice and uh, we've been talking about it i think the, the boys are really mentally focused right now and uh, really excited to play galen um, they, they, you know we have two losses this year one to galen and one to hall western christian and we felt felt that we shouldn't have lost them so the boys are pumped to get an opportunity to, to redeem themselves i'm look, we're looking forward to it and uh, like i said it should be a battle and it's it's always a great crowd when you come to a regional final and nice big gym there in Lamar's to host that and coach I just wanted to, to bring up Alex Schrader you know he had, he had been gone with an injury and you know he's got that that boot on his foot right now so does that limit him at all or is he pretty much good to go with that boot on just more of a precautionary type thing yeah it's crazy I was really concerned um, he opted to, uh, not to have surgery uh, until after he's done with his high school career and they they got this boot for him and I thought it would slow him up or mess with his shot or take a while but he is just amazingly as quick as he normally is and uh, shooting the ball really well right now and so he's great to have back I, I love his dedication he loves basketball it's his favorite sport and I knew he wasn't going to miss the whole thing and so he put a lot of time and effort to heal as fast as he could and we're, we're glad to have him back on the court and of course Alex was a, a big factor in you guys getting off into a really quick start against South O'Brien knocking down that first three on the first possession and I think he hit three you know really early in the game and that really uh, kind of gave that separation in that South O'Brien games. If you could script a start against Galen Catholic, I think you would, you know, somewhat similar to that start. Yeah, yeah, if we could put four quarters together like we played that first quarter against South O'Brien, uh, we could probably beat anybody in the state. <laughs> but uh, we, yeah, Alex did hit three 
threes in the first quarter, which was huge for us. It just gives us, you know, then when, once we got that, you know, going, with, then Holman gets freed up inside and we can start pounding inside. And then that really makes, you know, two dimensional, which really makes us tough. Coach, one thing you had mentioned to me uh, in one of our interviews was, you know, you guys have been to state six times in a row and this senior class doesn't want to be the, the group that doesn't make it to states. Just talk about how that, that has, that, that's been motivating here uh, throughout this season. It is, it is a big motivation and it's a big motivation for off season work ethic and everything and it's uh these seniors take it to heart that uh you know they don't want to be that team that don't make it and they put a lot of off-season time in and they've worked hard and uh they are really focused right now you can come into practice and uh, uh you can walk through a practice and they wouldn't even notice you walking through they're just so focused and i'm really excited for them and i want to do the best i can do as a coach to get them there again because they deserve it for all the time and effort they put in coach we were talking before uh, we came on here that you know your girls team uh is going to state as they uh the beat Xyra Elkhorn Kimmelton and and just kind of how neat of a thing and how rare it has to be for both the boys and girls team to make it to state. And you said the boys were over ecstatic, you know, for these girls to make it down there. You know, hopefully they can uh, do the same thing and you guys will both be down there at state. Yeah, that would be really cool. Really cool. Yeah, I was really proud of the boys last night. They were really good student section. And then when the girls won, as soon as they let them on the floor, they I thought they were going to wipe the girls team out. They were so like, uh, excited and run, run them down. But uh, I was really proud of the boys for supporting them so well and being so excited for the girls. And I'm proud of I'm excited for the girls. Uh, they did. They uh, uh, deserve the first time in school history. I've been there. It's just an overwhelming feeling. It's fun, and uh, I'm proud of them. Well, Coach Rudin, we uh, wish you the best of luck against Galen Catholic. And you know, it's going to be a great ball game. We'll hope to get a lot of fans over. But if you can't make it, tune in to KC 92.1. And best of luck against uh, Galen Catholic. Thank you very much. Thanks for following us. What? There's two things we can control every morning when we wake up. All right, there's two things. Don't take any athletic ability. It's attitude and effort. Let's get started here. Let's go. Let's have a day. Our community. It's where we live. It's where we work. And it's where our kids play. At American Bank, we're not just in the community, we're a part of the community, and that's why we are a proud supporter of the St. Mary's Hawks. With our 3 for 3 program, the varsity girls and boys are able to increase the contribution that is made to the St. Mary's Activity Club. Here's to hoping your talent, dedication, and teamwork makes for a slam dunk season. American Bank, achieving success together, member FDIC. Gangler Feed Service in Remsen is your complete farm store. We feed all farm species, and we're a Hubbard, Kent, and Big Game dealer. Whether it's sprayers, grain banking, corn drying, or feeding your animals, we're your complete farm store, and service is our business. Gangler Feed Service in Remsen. Call them at 786-2234 or stop in and see them. Service is our business at Gangler Feed Store, Remsen. The Fish family has been providing trusted funerals since 1943 when Joseph and Adele Fish bought Remsen's only funeral home. Beginning in 1976, Joe's son Joel and his wife Jean continued the tradition of being a family-owned and operated business. In 2009, David and Elizabeth Fish carried the family tradition into the future and now offer monuments. The Fish family is honored to assist you in your time of need, offering care and compassion. Fish Funeral Home and Monuments in Remsen, our family serving your family since 1943. Welcome back to the Lamar's Community High School Gymnasium on the Saturday night for a Class 1A sub-state final between the Remsen St. Mary's Hawks and the Galen Catholic Jays. Tim Holmes alongside Matt Schilling and Mason Schilling on the call tonight. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups. We're just a couple of minutes away from tip-off. We will take a look here at the FBS starting lineups for tonight's contest. First for the visitors, the away team on the scoreboard, the Galen Catholic Jays. At one guard, a 6'1 senior. Number four, Keaton Bonderson. 
At another guard, a six foot senior. Number 14, Drake Grosher. At forward, a 6'1 senior, number 12, Keaton Logan. At a, another forward spot, a 6' foot senior, number 40, Connor Kraft. And rounding out the Jays starting lineup in the post tonight, a 6'3 senior, number 42, Ryan Augustine. The Jays coached by Mike Langle, assisted by Ryan Wilchin and Eric Kelly. Now the starting lineups for the home team on the scoreboard tonight, the Rems and St. Mary's Hawks at one guard, a 5'9 senior, number three, Alex Sch Schroeder. At a, another guard position, a 6'2 senior, number 23, Kale Ortman. At forward, a 6'1 senior, number 40, Jackson Bunkers. At, in the post, a 6'5 senior, number 30, Ryan Willman. And the other post player, Sophomore, a 6'4 sophomore, number 55, Colin Holman. The Hawks are co head coached by Scott and Justin Rudin, assisted by Jared Schott and Colin Schrader. We will have, we, are, we do have a packed house here in Lamar's tonight. The proximity couldn't be any better as the Jays from across town and the Hawks from approximately 10 miles away. We have a full house for the 7 p.m. start. We're going to have the... We are having the starting lineups now in the gymnasium. We'll use this as an introduction. Matt Schilling alongside me tonight on our color commentary. Matt has been following the Jays all season long. Matt, give me some keys to victory, you think, for each of these squads. For the Jays, it'll be seeing what Keaton Logan can do against whoever he's guarding and seeing if the Jays can shut down Colin Holman. Holman has been kind of the Achilles heel for the Jays and the Jays lacking a bit of size. It'll be interesting to see that matchup between him and a combination of Ryan Augustine and Gabe Wilchin. Gabe did a great job in the last game shutting down Newell Fonda's big down low. And for St. Mary, it'll be can they keep the consistent shooting and are they going to have control of the pace of the game for the night? And, and I think you hit the, the nail on the head with that one, Matt. The Hawks want to control tempo, play very sound defense, especially in the half court. They would like to keep this game in the 50s, low 60s. And the Jays advanced in a thrilling 79-77 win on Tuesday night against Noah Fonda. And they want to get this, this score in the 70s tonight and get up and down the floor. But Remsen shown that they can do they can play either game. They did that in the first matchup, and the Jays took it to a lower scoring affair when they were in Remsen. Of course, Remsen was missing a couple players in that game due to illness, and that could have been the difference between a win and a loss for Remsen St. Mary's that night. Well, this the third matchup between these two this season. The rubber match coming your way. Remsen St. Mary's ranked seventh in class 1A, 21 and 2 overall, 10 and 0 in the World Eagle Conference in the conference champions. And the Jays come in at 20 and 5 overall, 7 and 2 in the World Eagle Conference. Good enough for third place behind St. Mary's and West Sioux. Of course, this is Mike Langle's last season coaching, and I think that'll be a little extra motivation. Not that the, not that either team needs more of a motivation, but possibly a little extra motivation for the Jays, as this is his farewell season as the head coach for the Jays. We are going to take a quick break here with the National Anthem in the gymnasium. We'll be back with the opening tip just minutes away here from Lamar's Community High School Gymnasium on Fuller Digital Solutions. Our community, it's where we live, it's where we work, and it's where our kids play. At American Bank, we're not just in the community, we're a part of the community, and that's why we are a proud supporter of the St. Mary's Hawks. With our 3-for-3 three three program, the varsity girls and boys are able to increase the contribution that is made to the St. Mary's Activity Club. Here's to hoping your talent, dedication, and teamwork makes for a slam dunk season. American Bank, achieve success together, member FDIC. It's easier than ever to find the live stream for your team now on FullerDigital.net. Home and away, if we're covering your team, your team's videos are on FullerDigital.net. Just click on your school and you'll find the game. Thank you for watching our events and remember, the games are on FullerDigital.net.
Welcome back to the Fuller Digital Solutions free game show. As we mentioned, a packed house here to see two squads from the Oregon Conference duke it out for a chance at the play the state tournament in Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines. That'll start not this week, but the following. The girls will be in Des Moines this week. Remsen St. Mary's, what's at stake? The Hawks have been to the state tournament each of the last six seasons looking for their seventh trip in a row. The Jays looking for their first state tournament berth on the boys' side since 1983 in the farewell season for Coach Mike Langle. Here's opening tip. The Jays in their road yellows. The Hawks in their home whites. Galen wins the tip, and we are underway. In this 1A sub-state, here's Bonderson. Guarded by Wilman, he'll go inside. Logan gives it to Kraft on a ball fake, and he can't finish in the lane. Jackson Bunkers on the rebound, and Remsen St. Mary's on their first offensive possession. St. Mary's advanced in a 68-51 win up in Sioux Center on Tuesday night at South O'Brien. Here's Bunkers inside, a spin move cut off. Roman, a free throw line jumper, no good. And it's one and done as DeRocher has the board. Both teams with a little, looks like a little jitters here early. Bonderson's first jumper in and out. As we mentioned, Bonderson 40 points in Tuesday night's win over Newell Fonda, including a couple of massive dunks in the third quarter. Roman cut off, has to kick it out. Tries to go inside to Holman, guarded by Augustine. Now he has the pass kicked out of bounds. A this minute. is the silliest rule. I hate this rule in high school this year. Hopefully they fix it for next year. A kickball does not equal a reset shot clock. That a bit different than the college and the NBA game. 6.50 to go first quarter, 15 seconds on the shot clock. There's Bunkers and Pass inside, Willman against Augustine. Gives a ball fake, hook off the glass, no good. And it'll go out of bounds off the foot of Ryan Augustine. It'll stay here with just five on the shot clock. It'll be interesting to see what they get drawn up. They can get the ball in quickly to Holman and see if he can get a shot up quickly. The officials are gonna come together here now. A discussion on whether it hit the rim and that's what they're looking at each other, whether they should reset the shot clock or not. I think they're saying no. And they're gonna wave it off. So it'll be five seconds on the shot clock. The Hawks inbounded under their own basket. There's a lob inside, Holman with it. The shot, no good, but draws the foul. The first foul of the night. That one's gonna go on Keaton Logan. And the sophomore post player, Colin Holman, averaging 15 points per ball game at the free throw line. Gets the roll on the first, and the Hawks with the first points of the night. The sophomore shoots at 72% from the free throw line on the season. And he rattles both in. RSM on the scoreboard first, a minute and a half into this one. Here's Bonderson, guarded by Schrader. And a foul called on the floor as Bonderson tried to jump stop. They're gonna get, they're gonna get. They got bunkers. bunkers. Yeah, Jackson Bunkers, his first foul. Each team with one. Here's a three from the corner, right through for Logan. Keaton Logan, the first Jays basket of the night. From the far corner and Galen in front, three to two. Logan had a big three from the corner in that win the other night. And now Ortman keeps his footing and finishes through contact. St. Mary's right back in front. Augustine's gonna fire a triple. That's off the mark. Logan fouled on the putback. And if that's on Bunkers, that's gonna be his second. I think it is, it is. And they are gonna get Bonkers, and he just picked up his second foul of 5.53 to go in the first quarter. A tough break for the senior. Waldschmidt sitting at the table waiting to come in for him, I believe. 
Morgan gets the first free throw to go. As we mentioned, Logan had a big three from the corner with about 90 seconds to go in that ball game the other night and up by one to help solidify that victory. He gets both free throws here and Galen Catholic right back in front, it's five to four. Just a couple of minutes in. As we mentioned, it's Landon Walschmidt in the ball game for Bunkers as he's in foul trouble. Here's Schrader on a dribble drive. Floater in the lane is short. And Schrader able to track down the offensive rebound and Jay's a second chance. Playing with a brace on that left ankle now stolen away by Connor Kraft. Gives it off to Bonderson. Bonderson all the way through. His shot denied by Ortman at the rim. We're seeing some great defense from both teams here. And the defensive transition for Remsen St. Mary's is very good. Now here's Ortman on a spin move, finishes with his left hand. Beautiful spin move. A great start, a good pace to this game early on. Here's Augustine inside, has a size advantage on Walsh, and tries to kick it out. Bonderson able to track it down. St. Mary's wants to play a man-to-man. -man. Logan's three off the mark. Augustine an offensive rebound. His putback is good around Holman. Ryan Augustine showing, showing some physical toughness there in the paint. A lot of seniors in both of these lineups. Now here's a pass inside. Holman, the sophomore, right-handed finish off the glass. And Galen Catholic struggled defensively with Caden Myers from Newell Fonda the other night, giving up some size. And Holman's gonna have an advantage here tonight. Kraft kicks it out. Logan puts it on the deck. Cut off. Here's Augustine, his short jumper. Good. Both teams trading baskets over the last two minutes. It's the Jays in front, nine to eight. Here's Walshman, or Ortman, excuse me, with it. Gives it off to Holman on the left wing. Walshman up top now, and Schrader will run the offense. Jay, student section to our left, jumping up and down. There's a spin move off the glass. Good for Ortman. And Ortman giving the Hawks offense a pick me up with Bunkers on the bench. A couple of finishes in the lane. Now Kraft gives it off to Bonderson. Still plenty of time on the clock. Bonderson, a tough jumper in and out. And it's one and done as Schrader pulls down the board. Jay showing a bit of man when uh, they they played almost the entire game against New Fonda in a zone. You talk about that size disadvantage with Myers the other night. Now Wilman and up and under, he finishes. That was a beautiful move by Wilman. Ball fake in the lane, got Kraft in the air, and Wilman able to finish. Grosher cut off. Remsen St. Mary's so good defensively on the man-to-man, -man. and now the rebound is loose, and the Hawks come away with it after Logan has it rim in and out. Logan got the first three-point attempt to go. He's missed his last couple. Here's Ortman. This time he picks up his dribble. Schrader uses a screen, and he's got to get rid of it, and does. Down to 10 on the shot clock. Ortman at the top of the key. Spin in the lane. Up and under, and he can't finish around Logan this time. Oh, a pretty good look at it. Bonderson inside, has that pass knocked away by Schrader. He had a cutting Augustine right down in the lane and just poked away and out of bounds. Remains Jay's basketball. We talked about that transition defense from Remsen St. Mary's able to get back and eliminate a Late attempt from Augustine. Wilchin subbed in for DeRocher. We'll see what size, what kind of size matchups are going to go on now with Wilchin in the ball game. Kraft, he can't finish off the glass inside. Shows a little frustration. Wilman has it. He gives it off to Ortman on the right wing. 
And the Jays go to a 2-3 zone defensively. We knew we'd see it at some point. And that pass stolen away by Augustine. Gives it off to Bonderson. Bonderson finishes at the rack. I think Bonderson wanted an alley-oop on that. Settled for the layup. Hawks in front, 12 to 11. 65 seconds to play in the opening quarter. Here's Alex Schrader with it. Gives it off to Waldschmidt on the left wing. Gives it back. Now Ortman, a right wing three. That's off the mark. Augustine clears the glass, and now the Jays push it ahead. Kraft can't finish on a long pass from half court. Had a little too much acceleration. Pass might have been just a bit late and pinned him behind the backboard. The Hawks will take the ball on a, an eight second clock differential between the game clock and shot clock. Schrader uses a screen, now Holman, he gives it up. Hawks patient with it here in the half court. Eight left. Cross court pass, Walshman a good look from three. That's no good off the top of the glass. And with seven Ooh, seconds Augustine's to go, hurt. and Augustine's hurt, just three seconds to go. Logan, three, no good at the first quarter buzzer. And after an exciting first quarter, Rims and St. Mary's leads this one 12 to 11. We'll be back with second quarter action right after this here on Fuller Digital Solutions. Insurance can be confusing. With all of the legal terms, different policies, what are you actually getting? With over 60 years of experience, there's no confusing the experts at Matkin Insurance. Let Matkin Insurance help you find the policies that fit your lifestyle, budget, and needs. Matkin Insurance takes pride in being an independent agency, always working for what's best for their customers. So what are you waiting for? Contact Matkin Insurance today. Are you ready to start a career with an exciting team? Thermobond is looking to add to our team of experts. We offer competitive wages, a positive work environment, and on-the-job training. Thermobond is headquartered in Elk Point, South Dakota, and for over 30 years, we've been providing lightweight and precast solutions for multiple industries nationwide. Check us out and see if you'd like to start a new career with us today. Back here at the Lamar's Community High School Gymnasium, Remsen St. Mary's a 12 to 11 lead in the basketball here to start the second quarter. The Hawks led in scoring by Cale Orton, six points, four for Holman, and a couple for Willman there in the first quarter. Here's Waldschmidt, the Jays still in that zone defense. Ball's loose and the Hawks come away with it. Schrader, left-handed drive, he's cut off. They kick it out. Keaton Harpen on the floor for the St. Mary's Hawks. Schrader, 10 on the shot clock. Schrader kicks it up top, here's Harpen all with it. Now Walshman, Harpenau gives it they up. They gotta put it up. Schrader at the shot clock buzzer, no good. And it's a rebound for the Jays. On the run, here's DeRocher, an open look. No good, that's short. Kellen's in the ball game for Augustine now. One and done as Holman clears the glass. Carter Kellen in the middle of that 2-3 zone. Give the Jays some size. Inside. Schrader on the far wing. He'll swing it around. Hawks trying to get it inside. Not much luck with Willman at the top of that zone. Now, no good off the shot. Off the glass, I should say. Grosher fouled on the loose ball. The foul's going to be assessed to. To get Schrader on the foul. It's gonna be on Willman. Well, they got Willman, it's his first, the third team foul on the Hawks, just one on the Jays. 6.35 to go in the first half. Here's Bonderson, he's still looking for his first points. Excuse me, he's got two. And 
to Rocher. He'll get it back to Logan. Logan guarded by Holman. Now drives all the way through the defense. Can't finish. Offensive putback. No good off the back iron. That was Gabe Wilchin. Couldn't finish from point blank range. Hillman on the baseline kicks it out. Schrader thought about it. Here's Ortman back in the ball game. Remsen St. Mary's not going to force that outside shot. Wants to work it around. They got some size inside. Here's Wilman at the free throw line. His jumper good. Right through for Ryan Wilman. It's his second field goal of the night. And the Hawks in front, 14 to 11. They would say this is the tempo that they want to play at. Anderson guarded by Ortman. He's going to call off the screen, drives all the way in. He'll finish with a finger roll. And a smooth move from Bonderson. He's got four. The Jays respond. Hawks up by one. Landon Walt Schmidt. He's going to pull it back out. Hawks working around the perimeter. Now Wilman works to the corner. They'll have it there. Trying to get it into Holman. Not much luck. Ortman's going to drive. His floater in the lane. Good. Kale Ortman's had the hot hand for the Jays early on. Hawks. In the lead, or excuse me, for the Hawks in the lead up to three again. DeRocher hands off to Bonderson. He's going to fire a triple. No good. The rebound is going to go to the Jays. There's a battle between Kellen and Holman. Last touch by Kellen. And the Hawks a three-point lead in the basketball. 4.38 to go in the first half. Kellen gives the Jays size, but he's not as quick as Augustine. Remember, Augustine got hurt in the... Last 10 seconds of the first quarter, rolling an ankle. to see if the Jays can get him back in the ball game. Willman finds Holman in the corner. Hawks swing it around, patient against that 2-3 zone. Ortman a corner three. Off the mark, the rebound is trailed by Bonderson. One on three, the short jumper, no good off the back iron for Bonderson. And the Hawks clear it. Schrader will walk it into the front pole. Now Wilman on the deck, a jump stop. Ortman, a corner three from this side, tries, no good. Holman, an offensive rebound. Schrader's gonna fire away. He knocks it down. And a big shot from Alex Schrader. And Remsen St. Mary's in front, 19-13, the largest lead of the night for either side at six. St. Mary's on a 5-0 run. Rocher into the paint, gives it to Logan. He drives baseline. He can't finish around Ortman. And the Hawks able to clean up the glass yet again. And here's Schrader. Leaves it on the handoff to Walt Schmidt. The tempo favoring the Hawks very much so. Schrader's going to fire a three again. That's off the mark. Now Bonderson pushes it ahead one on three. Leaves it to DeRocher, back to Bonderson. Trying to get Bonderson in the flow of the game offensively. Here's a drive, a dribble jump shot. Good from Bonderson. That one, a tough shot from about 18 feet over Holman. And the deficit down to four. 2.25 to go, first half. St. Mary's is led for the majority of the second quarter. St. Mary's was yelling for a timeout and finally got one. And Justin Rudin's going to call a timeout for the St. Mary's bench. 2.18 to go in the first half. St. Mary's in front, 19 to 15. Just a 30-second timeout, but we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back right after this here on Fuller Digital Solutions.
Class 1A sub-state final here in District 1. A couple of War Eagle Conference schools going at it. Remsen St. Mary's, Galen Catholic, the rubber matches. Each of these two beat each other on their home floors earlier this season. On opposing floors. On opposing floors, yes. The winner of this one is going to go to Des Moines and represent the War Eagle Conference in the state tournament. The Jays looking for their first appearance since 1981. The Hawks looking for their seventh straight appearance. Now a foul away from the ball. They're going to get craft on that one. You get a hold on 14, DeRocher. You call that one on DeRocher, just his first. And the second team foul on the Jays. Pace of play's been good. There's not been a lot of fouling away from the ball. Schrader off the inbounds. That's short. Bonderson is going to be fouled. As he was going out of bounds to get it. Wilman. That's Wilman's second. That's Wilman's second as well to go along with Bunkers. Having two as well. Those two have all four of the Hawks' first half fouls. Jays with the ball, down by four. We're under two minutes to go in the first half. Anderson has it. Gets into the middle, kicks it out. Garosher's right wing three. Good! Drake Garosher knocks one down from outside. And the Jays have answered the bell. They were down by six just a minute ago, and they cut the deficit to one. Aileen Catholic going back to a man-to-man -man defense. Ortman guarded by Logan. Kill gives it up. Now Landon Waldschmidt out by the volleyball line will give it back. Ortman had a lot of success getting to the lane. Now he's going to pull up from 16. That's good. And Ortman continues to carry the load offensively for St. Mary's here in the first half. Here's Bonderson, a jump stop in the lane. Can't get it to go off the glass, and Wilman cleans it up. Fifty seconds to go in the first half. And now a foul is going to be called on Garosha. Might have caught an elbow to the nose in the mean. In the meantime, as well. That's his second. And in a hurry, and now. We're going to see Jackson Bunkers back on the floor for the Hawks. Played the last 48 seconds. Gabe Wilchin also checks in for the Jays. Here's Schrader. Got Bunkers at the top of the key, guarded by Keaton Logan. Now an inside pass, Ortman's got good position, shots blocked away, and they're gonna let it go, it's gonna go to the Jays. The officials looked at each other wondering who touched it last. I'm gonna say Ortman got his paw on it. Right before it went out of bounds. 31 seconds to go, the shot clock is off. Augustine back on the floor for the Jays. Here's Logan into the front court with Galen trailing by three in the basketball. He can hold for the final shot of the half. Logan up top, guarded by Schrader. Gives it off to Bonderson. Down to eight on the clock. Bonderson pulls up, free throw line, no good. Logan grabs the offensive board. His floater in the lane, no good off the back iron. The follow, no good for Kraft. And the Jays have had, had three cracks at it there, couldn't finish. And at the half, seventh ranked, Remsen St. Mary's leads 21 to 18. We're going to take a commercial break. We'll be back with the Fuller Digital Solutions halftime show after this here on FDS. At Happy Siesta Healthcare Center in Remsen, Iowa, we strive to provide a comfortable home away from home. Whether your needs are for long-term care or rehab to home, regardless of your level of care, our mission is to provide you and your loved ones with quality, compassionate care in your time of need. And outpatient therapy is available with Remsen Rehab, located inside Happy Siesta. And Happy Siesta Healthcare Center is always looking for quality employees. So contact us if you'd like to work here. Happy Siesta Healthcare Center. Remsen.
back. Welcome back to Lamar's Community Gym, Lamar's, Iowa. Galen trails 18-21 to to St. Mary here in the 1A sub-state final. And once again, Tim Holmes alongside Matt Schilling tonight bringing you the Class 1A District 1 sub-state final between a couple of very familiar foes in this one. Let's take a look at the first half recap. The St. Mary's Hawks led for the majority of it, led 12 to 11 at the end of the first quarter and have stretched that lead ever so slightly to 21 to 18 here at the halftime break. Points for the Hawks, leading scorer, Kill Ortman into double figures with 10 points in the first half. A couple for Alex Schrader. Three points for Ryan Willman. And four for Colin Holman. The Jays led in scoring by Keaton Bonderson, six points. Five for Keaton Logan. Three for Drake DeRocher. And four for Ryan Augustine. 21-18, Remsen St. Mary's lead here at the halftime break. And Matt, we talked a little bit about tempo in this ball game and how the Jays wanted to get up and down the floor. Remsen St. Mary's can really play either way, and uh, but would much rather keep that tempo, keep the score in the 40s, 50s, lower 60s. And uh, so far, I would say that the, the Hawks have had the tempo to their liking. We're on pace for a 40-point ball game, and, and that's exactly what St. Mary's wants. And the biggest thing in this the biggest thing in this game so far has been the rebounding by St. Mary's. Able to steal away extra possessions. They milk down the clock. They don't mind taking that shot clock down to five seconds. And that's what they've done in this ball game. They've really taken the Jays out of it as far as that goes. And they've taken the tempo away from the Jays. The Jays want to go down and they want to shoot quick. And if they don't get it, they are hoping for a rebound, but they're they're okay to settle and try to force pace. And that's, I think, what's what's uh, flustering the Jays. They'll go down now, and the, you saw it here late in the first half. A lot of flat shots, and those hit off the back iron. You saw a lot of that here at the end of the first half. Off the back iron, rebound by St. Mary. And, and the Jays have had opportunities inside, just have not been able to finish. And so far, Remsen St. Mary's has cleaned up the glass on both ends of the floor, it seems like, for the most part. But the Hawks, credit to them, a, a three-point lead and played most of the first half without... Senior guard slash forward Jackson Bunkers. Bunkers, the leading scorer on this squad. I know, uh, I know Holman gets a lot of attention in the, the middle, but Bunkers averaging 16 points per ball game and so far hasn't been a threat at all in this game just because he hasn't been on the floor enough due to foul trouble. But despite all that, the Hawks still leading this one 21 to 18 here at the halftime break. Let's head to another commercial break. We'll be back with more here on the Fuller Digital Solutions halftime show after this here live from Lamar's. Our community, it's where we live, it's where we work, and it's where our kids play. At American Bank, we're not just in the community, we're a part of the community, and that's why we are a proud supporter of the St. Mary's Hawks. With our 3 for 3 program, the varsity girls and boys are able to increase the contribution that is made to the St. Mary's Activity Club. Here's to hoping your talent, dedication, and teamwork makes for a slam dunk season. American Bank, achieve success together. Member FDIC. It's easier than ever to find the live stream for your team now on FullerDigital.net. Home and away, if we're covering your team, your team's videos are on FullerDigital.net. Just click on your school and you'll find the game. Thank you for watching our events, and remember, the games are on FullerDigital.net. Okay. All the best sports shows, all the best games, on 101.5 FM and 1570 AM for your college sports, University of South Dakota. For NHL coverage, Minnesota Wild. For NBA coverage, Minnesota Timberwolves. For MLB coverage, Chicago Cubs. And the best games in both college and the pros with the ESPN Radio featured games. Never miss out on the action. 
Westel offers faster internet speeds for your new devices. The new year's begun, and your home may have new internet-connected devices. Maybe Santa brought your children new phones, tablets, or a gaming console. Or maybe you used holiday money to finally purchase the new computer or smart home devices you've been wanting. The more devices, the more speed you need, along with a quality router to support them. To enjoy the best internet experience, call Westel at 712-786-1181 to upgrade to a new internet speed and a Westel managed Wi-Fi router. And welcome back here to the Fuller Digital Solutions Halftime Show. Remsen St. Mary's ranks 7th in Class 1A, leads 21-18 to here at the halftime break over the rivals in the War Eagle Conference, the Galen Catholic Jays. St. Mary's girls with a great win last night. That was a come from behind win. They were down by two or three at the half. Won by something along the margin of 15. Yeah, I went over Xyra, Alcorn, Kimbleton the other night in Mapleton. The first state tournament appearance for the girls program in Remsen St. Mary's history. Congratulations to them. Talk it's, about a championship school. Yeah, yeah. Softball, softball made it to state last year. Volleyball's coming up. Uh, they, they played well this year. And then a state champion or state trip for the girls team in, in football state championship yep. uh, right now rems and st mary's just had a spectacular run a lot of success and we talked about what's at stake for them their seventh straight state appearance in the basketball court and that's i i couldn't tell you up front matt but I, i'm guessing not many schools have done it six straight times let alone have an opportunity here at a seventh as well so rems and st mary's a lot of success on the boys and girls side. As you mentioned, the Jays in the farewell tour for Coach Mike Langle. Coach Langle trying to take the Jays to the boys state tournament for the first time since 1981. And the girls remember there a couple of years ago in 2019 and made a semifinal run, but Coach Mike Langle in his 18th season at Galen Catholic calling it quits after the end of this year, but trying to get the Jays to the state tournament before he bids his farewell. Perennial, perennially, he has made runs in the uh, sub-state finals. In two, this is a rematch from two years ago, almost two years to the day, Rems and St. Mary's and Lamar's Galen Catholic met in the 1A sub-state. And almost an identical halftime at this point. Yeah, and the, the Hawks ended up winning that ball game by about eight points, but they led by four to six points throughout the majority of that one. And the ironic part is a lot of the same players from each of these squads were involved in that game. The Jays leading scores that night were Keaton Logan and uh, Keaton Bonderson. So it, the experience is there. The Jays stubbed their toe last year, getting knocked out in the second round by Woodbury Central, but back with an opportunity here in a very senior-laden squad really for both of these two teams tonight. We are about 80 seconds away from the start of the second half. Hawks in front, 21-18. We'll be back after this commercial break right here on Fuller Digital Solutions. Customers deserve great internet too. This is Doug from Evertech. You deserve Evertech's no limits internet and the personal service that comes with it. We've dedicated 32 years to bringing customers like you reliable, unlimited internet. It's internet you can count on. Call or email our Everly office to get started. You and your family need internet with unlimited use, no contracts and no overages. You need Evertech. Visit evertech.net to learn more. Evertech, internet where you live. At Floyd Valley Healthcare, we want you to travel somewhere fun, not to a doctor's appointment. Specialists, specialty clinics, and outpatient services bring advanced skills and training and make diagnostics and treatment capabilities more accessible, keeping care convenient and close to home. Working in step with your healthcare team, specialists communicate and collaborate to provide you and your family the care that you need. To learn more about specialty services, talk with your provider or visit floydvalley.org. Welcome back to Lamar's Community High School. Matt Schilling alongside Ma Mason Schilling running our camera and Tim Holmes as we get ready for second half action. And first time Matt and I have gotten a chance to work together and uh, Matt, I'd say it's going pretty well and we've got a great, <laughs> great environment for uh, high school basketball tonight here. Incredible crowd, a packed house between these two squads separated by just 10 miles. The Jays have it to start the second half 
Trailing by three, it's Logan Bonderson, Kraft, DeRocher, and Augustine on the floor for Galen Catholic. Here's Bonderson cut off. Jays have Schrader, Bunkers, to pass, Kraft able to finish. A bounce pass from DeRocher and Kraft gets the first basket of the second half. There's a pass inside to Holman. He can't finish through contact and the Jays will clear the glass. The Hawks have Ortman, Schrader, Bunkers, Willman and Holman on the floor. Anderson cut off again. Augustine not afraid to shoot from outside. He's knocked down some threes from out there this season. And Kraft fires that one up off the back iron. St. Mary's the basketball and up by one just a minute into the second half. Jays back to a man-to-man -man defense. See if they continue to try to get it in the home end. Trying to find the mismatch. Here's Ortman. He's going to go baseline, cut off, and a drive by Wilman or a cut by Wilman, and he'll lay it in. Ortman goes baseline, dumps it off to Wilman on the cut, and Ryan Wilman has. Wilman just found a wide open lane to drive down, took advantage, and put up the basket. Jays brought that help side defense on the baseline, but Wilman able to beat it on the cut. There's Augustine, the Jays moving the ball in the half court. Anderson now guarded by Holman, he'll give it up. Kraft tries going inside to Augustine, it's stolen away by Bunkers. Bunkers will drive into the front court, he'll pick up the tempo bit. He walked with the basketball on the Might baseline there. Away at the walk, but he throws it away anyways. It'll be a turnover on the Jay, or on the Hawks, one way or the other. I'll tell you what, I will give it up to these officials tonight. It's been a physical contest. They've let some stuff go, but I think it's been fairly officiated going both ways. And with two squads that are so familiar with each other, we've had a great pace of play. Not many, I think just nine total team fouls in the first half. Here's Gabe Wilchin in the ball game. He'll give it up. Now Logan, he'll fire from the right elbow. In and out. And that was a shot the Jays were making consistently the other night against Newell Fonda. They've had a little tougher time shooting tonight, especially in the mid-range. Ortman's doubled, he'll kick it out. The Hawks will reset. There's a drive, Schrader all the way in. He's blocked by DeRocher. He'll stay here off the head of DeRocher. 15 on the shot clock. St. Mary's okay with letting that shot clock roll on down. Hillman gives it to Bunkers, mid-range jumper off the mark. Holman an offensive rebound in a foul. It's, it's, it's gonna, gonna be on gonna, Wilchin. It's gonna be on Wilchin. The question is it on the floor, they're gonna give him two free throws. Looks like they're holding the ball on the baseline, pointing toward the baseline, so it will be a baseline inbound. Foul on the floor, just the first foul of the night on Gabe Wilchin. And a fresh shot clock for the Hawks. And fresh legs for Jackson Bunkers. Start the second half. Holman position, catches it inside. He's blocked away by Wilchin. Last touch by the Jays, but Halo Catholic doing a nice job defensively. And Colin Holman, Holman a 6'5 sophomore post player. Nice hands. Now a lob inside to him. And he misses from point blank range. Put back, no good. And it's ping ponged around. And it's going to be last touched by the Jays yet again. You're saying how well Holman's do, or how well the Jays are doing on home and Holman with only four points tonight. And still affecting with Holman and Wilman out there and Ortman. Just that size giving the Jays troubles trying to clean clean up the glass and finish these defensive possessions. Here's Schrader to Ortman on the right wing. Uses a screen. Kick it out. Holman thought about a three. Leaves it for Bunkers. Put back Logan down. His step through. No good. And the rebound to Wilchin on the back side. Pushing it ahead. DeRocher will pull up. Here's Wilchin inside. Kicks it out. Logan wide open from the right wing. In and out in the 
Is that going to be an offensive foul? They have a loose ball foul on the rebound attempt. I think they got Schrader. They did. That's his first. Team's first of the second half. First foul on the Hawks here in the second half. Each team with just one foul. It's Alex Schrader's first in the contest. Each team with just one basket halfway through this second half. Halfway through this third quarter, sorry. Anderson short on that three-point attempt from the top of the key. And it's one and done. But once again, this is what St. Mary's wants. Bunkers drives baseline. No good on the shot, but draws the blocking foul. I think they got Wilchin. Nope, they got Augustine. It's Augustine on the blocking foul. It'll be Augustine's first team second. 3.55 to go, third quarter. Jackson Bunkers at the line for two. Right through for the senior. His first point of the night. Remember, he averages about 16 points per ball game. He's held in check by foul trouble in the first half, and he'll get one of two as the second rims out. A four-point lead for the St. Mary's Hawks. Anderson trying to bark out orders at the top of the key in the half-court offense. Now guarded by Bunkers is Bonderson. Here's Grosher, a drive, he's cut off. Augustine into the lane, he'll lose the handle, but kicks it out. Logan all the way in, and he's gonna get called for an offensive foul. Bunkers, remember to draw a charge. You don't have to have your feet set. Bunkers in position there, and Logan just got his shoulder down into him, and the offensive foul called. It's the second foul on Keaton Logan, the third team foul on the Jays here in the second half. Holman, or excuse me, Bunker's in good defensive position there. Nice crisp passing from St. Mary still here in the second half. Holman, a hook shot off the mark, and Wilchin clears the glass. Holman, a, one of the better looks he's had, but I think he was almost surprised by it. Kraft gives it off to Augustine. Wilchin, a little bit bigger lineup for the Jays. And now Connor Kraft drives in, now to the corner. Augustine's jumper, good! And that's a three from Ryan Augustine. And the deficit once again at one for the Jays. Schrader off to Wilman, he gets it back. His bounce pass stolen away. Augustine on a run out. The Jays on a fast break. Layup good. And Galen Catholic, their first time lead out. since back in the first quarter. And that's going to draw a timeout for the St. Mary's Hawks. The Jays in front, 25 24. A 30 second timeout by the Hawks. We'll be right back at this commercial break here on Fuller Digital Solutions. Galen Catholic on a quick 5-0 run has taken a 25-24 lead over Rems and St. Mary's. The last of that, a fast break layup for Ryan Augustine. He had all five to go on the triple. And they had to call him off the floor. He uh, he got subbed in for, and uh, that Jays had six on the floor there for just a second. St. Mary's calls a timeout, and they'll have the ball out of the timeout. Here's Jackson Bunkers, gives it off to Alex Schrader. Momentum is shifted a bit. The Hawks hoping that stop at that timeout. Bunkers, a good look from three. Off the mark, and Bonderson has the rebound. I thought Logan caught his wrist there on the follow through. Bonderson gives it up to Wilchin. Now Logan inside. Jay's trying to get it in. Kraft has that shot blocked, but I think a body foul. You call a push on Ryan Willman. And that's the third foul on Willman. Remember, 
He and Bunkers had the two in the first half. Now Wilman has six points on the night and three fouls. Connor Kraft knocks down the first free throw attempt. Kraft had 11 points in Tuesday night's win against Newell Fonda. And the senior gets one or two as the second rims off. Jay's on a 6-0 run right now. 26-24, Galen Catholic in front. 140 to go, third quarter. And Bunkers is going to get called for a charge. That's, Logan cut him off baseline. And that's Bunkers third. And now the third foul on Bunkers. And not a lot of forceful contact there, but I think Bunkers got the forearm up just enough to warrant the call. Now the Jays with the basketball up by two. Each team with three team fouls here in the second half. Bonderson, spin move in the lane, fade away, no good. Bonderson has been fairly cold from the field for the majority of the night. He's got six for the Jays. Now Ortman, he's been quiet here in the second half. He wants to get in the paint and does around Wilchin and he finishes with the right hand. Ortman yep. has 12 to lead St. Mary's in the game tied with 50 seconds to go here in the third. Broke a 6-0 run for the Jays. Logan wants to post up Schrader. He'll fade away. That jumper's good and Keaton Logan responds. 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. Wow, rises to its feet here for the Jays. A three second differential on the game clock and shot clock. Here's Ortman with it at the top of the key. Fox trying to hold for one. Shot clock down to 10. Gives it off to Bunkers. He wants to go one-on-one -on -one with Logan in the paint. Kicks it, a three from Wilman in the corner. Off the mark. And it's Kellen with the board. One second, Bonderson pulls up for a deep three. Good at the third quarter buzzer. Bonderson from, we'll say 30 feet. And the Jays will carry a five point lead to the fourth quarter. Bonderson was seven, excuse me, nine through three. Jays lead 31-26. We're gonna head to a commercial break. We're back with the fourth quarter right after this here on Fuller Digital Solutions. All the best sports shows, all the best games on 101.5 FM and 1570 AM for your college sports, University of South Dakota. For NHL coverage, Minnesota Wild. For NBA coverage, Minnesota Timberwolves. For MLB coverage, Chicago Cubs. And the best games in both college and the pros with the ESPN Radio featured games. Never miss out on the action. Westel offers faster internet speeds for your new devices. The new year's begun, and your home may have new internet-connected devices. Maybe Santa brought your children new phones, tablets, or a gaming console, or maybe... Thank you to West Hill for sponsorship there. We'll be back with more commercial breaks. Here in the fourth quarter, the Hawks with it to start the fourth quarter. Jays in front, 31-26 after a 30-foot heave from Keaton Bonderson at the third quarter buzzer. There's Schrader, a left-handed drive all the way in, and he gets the finish off the glass, and the Hawks come out of the third quarter break and respond immediately on an Alex Schrader left-handed finish. Here's Bonderson, uses a screen, he'll give it up to Kraft. Logan has it. He goes all the way in, he's gonna be tripped. They're gonna call that one on the floor, not in the act of shooting. He's on the, foul on the floor, and once again, it might be Bunkers. Nope, they're gonna get Schrader on a push. Bunker is close to picking up his fourth in that situation. Here's Kraft. He'll drive all the way in. Step through his finish. Good with the right hand. Kraft maneuvers himself around Bunkers. 33-28. Galen in front. A minute into the fourth quarter. 
Ortman has had the hot hand for the Hawks. He's got it on the right wing. Trying to get into Homan, guarded by Kellen. Now Bonnerson almost comes up with a steal. Almost an over and back. Bunker saves the possession and a foul on the floor. They're gonna get Kellen with just 11 seconds on the shot clock. The first foul on Kellen, the fourth team foul on the Jays. Could you ask any more out of an Iowa high school basketball game, especially a small town, small, uh, small class game? We've been pretty fortunate this past week with a lot of good quality basketball action. Bunkers drives baseline, spins, gets his man in the air and finishes around Logan. Logan smartly backs out as to not pick up the foul. That's the first field goal of the night for Bunkers. He's got three. Jays a three-point lead in the ball, 6.20 to go in this one. Bonderson up top with it. Trying to use a screen, give it off to Kraft. Kraft drives, no call, he leaves it short. The rebound attempt, the Jays come away with it. Bonderson. They're gonna call it on the floor. On the floor. And things are getting chippier under the hoop. And some contact, hard contact afterwards. Bonderson didn't like some words exchanged, but the foul on the floor and the Jays will have an inbound under their own basket. That, that was the fourth foul fourth, on Ryan Willman. Yeah, fourth foul on Willman. Wilchin coming to the ball game also for Kellen. Landon Walshmitt on the floor for the Hawks. Here's Logan to inbound it. He'll throw it up top to Bonderson. Six minutes to go. Jay's a three-point lead in the basketball. Trying to get it back to Logan. He's guarded well by Walshmitt. Walshmitt cuts him off, and now the Jays, here's Kraft inside, and he'll leave it for Augustine. His mid-range jumper is good. Ryan Augustine, who has held scoreless in Tuesday night's win, is giving the Jays 11 points tonight. Bunkers, left-handed finish, in and out. And the Jays with the ball, they push it ahead, and it's stolen away by Ortman. Trying to get it down to Augustine. And nice play by Ortman, almost baited him into that pass. Now the Hawks with the basketball. After the steal, Schrader out by the volleyball line. Trying to get it into Holman. Now Walshmitt's gonna fire a three. That's good. And the sophomore, Raymond Walshmitt, a big shot for the Hawks. It's 35-33, his first basket. And the sophomore stepping up and hitting a big one. Wilchin spins in the lane. He has to get rid of it. Crafted mid-range jumper short. Ortman right there. Schrader up the right side. Leaves it. Now Ortman all the way in. Kicks it out. Two-man game. Now there's Bunkers inside. Logan guarding him on the block. Now Ortman a three. That's off. That's off the mark. And the rebound to Kraft. And Kraft is going to be... Fouled on the floor. And Walshmitt's gonna pick up the foul. His first, and that is the sixth team foul for the Hawks. The Jays will be in the bonus the last full 18 of this one. Galen Catholic in front, 35, 33, 418 to go. A full timeout by the Jays. We'll take it with them. We'll be back right after this here on Fuller Digital Solutions. Customers deserve great internet too. This is Doug from Evertech. You deserve Evertech's no limits internet and the personal service that comes with it. We've dedicated 32 years to bringing customers like you reliable, unlimited internet. It's internet you can count on. Call or email our Everly office to get started. You and your family need internet with unlimited use, no contracts and no overages. You need Evertech. Visit evertech.net to learn more. Evertech, internet where you live. At Floyd Valley Healthcare, we want you to travel somewhere fun, not to a doctor's appointment. Specialists, specialty clinics, and outpatient services bring advanced skills and training and make diagnostics and treatment capabilities more accessible, keeping care convenient and close to home. 
working in step with your healthcare team, specialists communicate and collaborate to provide you and your family the care that you need. To learn more about specialty services, talk with your provider or visit floydvalley.org. Back here at the Lamar's Community Gymnasium. A packed house is going to be treated to a fantastic finish. The Jays with the ball leading 35-33 halfway through the fourth quarter. Here's Bonderson with the basketball. Cut off by Wall Schmidt. He'll give it up. Kraft drives his short jumper off the mark. Offensive rebound by Wilchin. Too hard off the glass. And we're going to have a loose ball foul going the other way. They're going to get Wilchin over the back. In Holming working hard on the glass. Kraft and Wilchin kind of squeezed him in there, and they're going to get Wilchin on a displacement foul. Five team fouls on the Jays. That's Wilchin's second. Now Galen trying to apply some full court man to man as they back off a bit. Jackson Bunkers brings it into the front court. Hawks down by two with the ball. Holman at the right elbow, he'll pull back, fires a three. Nice. Good, and the big man knocks it down from beyond the arc. And St. Mary's back in front, 36-35, with three, 30 to go. Big shot from Holman. St. Mary's on a 6-0 run. Anderson surveys, no, he's gonna be Cut off on the baseline by Holman, and it's going to be a blocking foul called. And that's a the seventh team foul puts the Jays in the bonus. Anderson's going to head to the free throw line for the front end of a one and one. Keaton just nine points tonight. The senior broke the single season scoring record in Galen basketball history in Tuesday night's win over Newell Fonda with 40 in that one to put him over the mark. Now a missed front end. That's the same thing that happened on, on Tuesday night for the Jays against Newell Fonda. And that mid-range jumper for Bonderson's been consistently off the back iron tonight. That free throw was as well. Here's the Hawks with it. Orton uses a screen. On Augustine, his right-handed hook shot. Good! That's stuck between the rim and the backboard and gets the shooter's bounce. Now the Hawks on an 8-0 run. Leaving this one 38-35, 2.45 to go. Logan is going to get called for a walk. Schrader on the defense there. And Mike Lagle is going to call a 30-second timeout here. 30-second timeout by the Jays. St. Mary's leads 38-35, 2.40 to go. We're going to keep it here during this 30-second timeout. I want to thank all of our sponsors from both schools that have been with the schools all season long. It's Five Star Communication, ESPN Radio, 101.5 FM, Thermobond, Evertech, Floyd Valley Healthcare, Colbeck Incorporated, Prime Bank, Sitzman Construction, American Bank, Fish Funeral Home, Gangler Feed, Happy Siesta, KCHE Shopper, uh, Mackin, Moeller Carpet, Mrs. B Convenience Store, uh, Remsen Farmer Co-op and Westel. Did we get them all, man? Oh gosh, there's a lot of them <laughs> for both schools, and I'll tell you what: these broadcasts and these exciting basketball games would not be possible in your homes without the support of these small town sponsors. And we should throw one more out there: Smith Insurance and Grinnell Mutual on the scoreboard tonight. And, oh, sorry, I, 30, I, I missed 35. one. I missed one more Schuster Trucking. Also, oh, there you go. Hawks with the basketball out of the. 30 second timeout. They'll break the pressure and settle into the half court. 2.30 to go. St. Mary's currently on an 8-0 run, leads this 38-35. It's been a game of runs here tonight. Bunkers waves off the screen. He's cut off by Wilch and now he splits it and finds himself wide open for the lay-in. Bunkers now with five. And the Hawks over the last couple of minutes have taken an the closest thing to control in this one, a five-point lead. Jays need a basket. Anderson leaves it for Wilchin. He's going to drive in. Has to kick it out. No call in the paint. 15 on the shot clock. Anderson leaves it for Logan. Logan's going to fire it from way downtown. Off the mark. 
and St. Mary's with the rebound. 140 to go, the Hawks a five point lead in the basketball. And now a foul gonna be called on Logan. And that's his third. And that just the sixth team foul on the Jays. Next one will put St. Mary's in the bonus. Bunkers with the ball. 1.30 to go. Holman in the corner, guarded by Wilchin. Lost the ball momentarily. Hawks score here. It will be the largest lead they've had here in the second half. Schrader, largest lead for anybody in the game. Schrader now fouled by Bonderson with 11 on the shot clock. And I don't think that's what Coach Mike Langle was wanting to either got a foul right away or play the possession out and the foul with 11 on the shot clock. We'll put Schrader at the line for the front end of a one one The mistake bon on Bonderson there. Bonderson's first foul with 72 seconds left in the ball game. Free throw good for Alex Schrader. He's got six now. It's an 11-0 run for St. Mary's. The senior guard averages nine points a night. It gives him seven, and the Hawks have the largest lead of the night for either squad at seven. Bonderson pulls up for three. That's off the mark. Augustine saves the possession. Bonderson's long two, no good. Maybe some contact, no call, and Bunkers has it. He'll be fouled in the backcourt. And now the Jays, or excuse me, the Hawks sense in victory. The Remsen faithful on the far side of the gymnasium on their feet. It is St. Mary's looking for their seventh straight state basketball appearance. Fourth foul for Logan. Eighth team foul. 56 seconds to go. Bunkers at the line. He backs down the first. Six points on the night for Jackson Bunkers. Forty-three, thirty-five, and the Hawks going to pull their players off the line. Second free throw, good. Bunkers gets both, and it's a nine-point lead. Anderson pushes it ahead quickly. Gives it off. Somebody's going to have to shoot, and now he will. A deep three, no good, and a loose ball foul called going the other way. Looks like it's on Augustine. I think they got Augustine. Is it? No, I think they got Waldschmidt for St. Mary's on the foul, so Ryan Augustine's the shooter. Right at 45 seconds to go, and Augustine will have a foul. Foul's going to be on Ortman. Or Ortman, excuse me. He's. I sent Augustine to the line for the one and one. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Off the back iron, no good in a tie up on the rebound. Possession now gives it to the Jays. First jump ball I think we've seen since the opening jump of the game. Drake DeRocher is going to come into the ball game for Wilch and the Jays going to need some firepower here. Down by nine with just 43 seconds to go. St. Mary's has taken control of this one over the last five or six minutes. They're currently on a 14-0 run. Anderson's triple, good, and that stops the drought. And a timeout for the Jays. And a quick timeout for Coach Mike Langle. A 30-second timeout. We'll take it with them. We'll be back here on Fuller Digital Solutions right after this. Digital and personal. You can have both with Prime Bank. Use our app to check balances, pay bills, make transfers, even deposit checks. Earn rewards with UPIC Checking, the only checking account that lets you choose your rewards, points, higher interest, or cash back rewards. And when you need in-person service, Prime Bank has a branch near you with a friendly, experienced staff ready to help. The best tech for when you want to bank from a distance and the best people close by when you need us. Prime Bank. Earn more your way. 
40 seconds to go in this one. Rims and St. Mary's a 44-38 lead over Galen Catholic. The Hawks will have the ball. It's inbound after Keaton Bonderson got into double figures on that last triple. He now has 12 points in the night for the Jays. Here are the Hawks to inbounds. They get into bunkers. They dribble into the front court. All the way in. The foul will be called on the floor, I believe. It's going to be on Bonderson. Ninth team foul. Bonderson picks up his second. The Hawks at the line for the front end of a one and one. Bunkers knocks down the first. And these are the situations. It's nice to have senior laden teams that have been in these positions before. Just know how to make winning plays down the stretch. The Hawks have been there before and they're doing it again tonight. Free throw good for Bunkers. He knocks down Bull. 35 seconds to go. Here comes Bonderson. Gives it off to DeRocher. Now Bonderson another long three. That's off the mark. And Alex Schrader has it. He'll be fouled. Double bonus now. And St. Mary's. An eight-point lead, the head of the free throw line, trying to extend it to double figures with 26 seconds to go. And the Hawks rank seventh in Class 1A. They've been rated most of the year. They're gonna finish their season at Wells Fargo yet again. Schrader knocks down the first. With the second, the senior guard, nine points on the night. The Hawks, a 10-point lead. Logan's deep three, no good. The rebound to Schrader. A loose ball foul in the... Once again, Schrader going to go to the line for two. That one is going to go on... Augustine, and it's, it's his Augustine, third. His third. Double bonus, so it's two, two shots. St. Mary's weathered the storm in the first half. Had that lead at the halftime break of three. The Jays came out of the halftime break, able to outscore the Hawks in the third quarter, including a buzzer beating three from 30 feet for Keaton Bonderson. You thought might have changed the momentum of this one. After the Jays got that five point lead, it was all Hawks to finish this one out. Bonderson misses the deep three, and the Jays are going to dribble it out. St. Mary's wins this Class 1A sub-state final here in the Mars. 49-38 final. The Hawks on to Des Moines for the seventh consecutive year, and they're going to join the girls program at Wells Fargo Arena in back-to-back -back weeks. An entertaining ball game the, just about the whole way through till about, I don't know, three minutes to go. And St. Mary's went on that, four, I think it was 14-0 run. Uh, and and that's, that's really kind of what was the difference in the game, in this ball game. Galen led this one 35-30 early in the fourth quarter. And St. Mary's able to outscore them 19-3 the rest of the way. We're going to have some post-game reaction after this one here from the Remsen St. Mary's players and coaches will stay tuned to our live feed we will get some player and coach interviews after this congratulations to co-head coaches scott and justin rudin and yet a, another trip to the state tournament when the hawks head to des moines next week a 49 38 final here in lamar's tonight hopefully nobody gets injured in that mosh pit I know that uh, last last night the uh, one of the St. Mary's girls walked away limping from a mosh pit like this so hopefully everybody's ankles and knees and everything else stays healthy as as uh, as they celebrate here on the floor at uh, Lamar's Community High School 
St. Mary's students getting their second court celebration, court storming celebration in three nights. The Hawks led in the scoring tonight by Kale Air. Kale Ortman's 14 point effort. Alex Schrader jumped into double figures with 10, but a balanced scoring attack for RSM. Second time here in three years. Second time here in three years. Remember the Hawks had that one point victory against Noah Found in the Substate last year up in Sioux Center. They found ways to win close games. This one showed up a a little bit different on the scoreboard at 11 points, but it was close all night long. St. Mary's closes it out 49-38. The Hawks advance to the state tournament. We're gonna to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back here with some player interviews on Fuller Digital Solutions right after this. The Rams and Farmers Co-op has been serving you for over a century. They are a full-service co-op providing area livestock producers with land lakes and canned feed. And take advantage of their full-service agronomy center for all your crop production needs to maximize your yield. They also buy and sell grain and offer grain drying. Rams and Farmers Co-op with years of experience and ready for the future. Sitzman Construction, Lamar's, general contractors you can trust with the job you need done, when you need it done. Call Jeremy at Sitzman Construction when you need a remodel or a complete build, and they work with EPS Buildings. Jeremy takes the time to know what you need. Past clients say he's reliable, honest, fair-minded, and reasonably priced. Contact Jeremy at Sitzman Construction. Jeremy and his crew will satisfy all of your construction needs. 712-540-2731. Welcome back to the Fuller Digital Solutions post-game show. Final score tonight in the Class 1A District 1 Substate Final. Rems and St. Mary's, the seventh ranked Hawks, a 49-38 win over rival Galen Catholic. The Hawks improve to 22-2 and on the season. The Jays end their season at 20 and full, 20 and six, excuse me. 20 and six on the season. That ends the coaching career of Jays coach Mike Langle. Remember Langle, an 18 year tenure here for the Jays, 26 years total. Galen Catholic shooting for their first state appearance in almost 40 years. And it's gonna have to wait another one after tonight's defeat, Remsen St. Mary's. We'll head to the state tournament for the seventh year in a row. And right now, Matt is working on getting a couple of the St. Mary's players up here. And when we do that, we will head to a commercial break so we can get everything situated for some interviews coming up. And we're gonna have Hawks forward, Kale Ortman in point guard. Alex Schrader with us right after this. We're going to head to a commercial break, and we'll, we'll be back with a couple of Hawks players right after this. Welcome back to the Fuller Digital Solutions post-game show live in Lamar's tonight, Lamar's Community High School gym. The Remsen St. Mary's Hawks advance to their seventh consecutive state basketball tournament in a 49-38 win. I got senior forward Kale Ortman and Kale, talk a little bit about the first half. Jackson got into foul trouble and you really had the hot hand for the, the offensive end tonight for the Hawks. And uh, just talk a little bit about that and what was going through your mind in that first half. Yeah, we knew coming into the game we had to be physical, have a good inside presence. Um, coaches told me specifically, I mean, I got to get some posts up. I got to be physical. I mean, I'm stronger than a lot of kids. I'm a big body, so got to use it to my advantage. And, you know, teammates got me the ball. Uh, we made plays. I mean, got to credit Galen's defense. I mean, they had us frustrated for a little bit. And, I mean, they gave us a run for our money. And when you've already played the Jays twice, this being the rubber match, you're so familiar with each other. What was some of the preparation that uh, both of the coaches, uh, Coach Justin and Coach Scott, 
that, that they had you guys come in and, and how do you prepare for it tonight? I mean, we've been playing Galen since third grade. I mean, we know all those guys. They know all of us. They know our tendencies. We know their tendencies. So, I mean, we basically didn't really have to go over anything. We knew what we had to do coming in. We knew they had really good shooters. They had really good we had, they had a really good post presence. So, I mean, we just had to shut that down, play to our best capabilities and hustle. Kale, congratulations. You make it back to the state tournament. And uh, we'll have the uh, Fuller Digital Solutions following you guys along. Congratulations on Thank a hard-fought win tonight. And good luck. Thank you. That was senior forward Kale Ortman joining us. Now we got senior guard Alex Schrader. Alex got in double figures at the end with some free throws at 10 points on the night. But, you know, I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked Kale. Jackson got into foul trouble right away and sat a long time in that first half. And, and I felt like on the offensive end, you guys had to have somebody step up and, and really help out because they were they were putting a lot of pressure on Colin down low. And uh, Kale had that high hand, but I thought you really did too and really helped control the tempo in that first half. Yeah, it was big when Jackson got two fouls. We knew we had to step up, us seniors. Kale did a great job doing that for us on the offensive end. We knew we just had to play great, great defense and just keep it up ball. So Jackson could sit with those two fouls and come back in the second half. And I got to ask you too, or just to get away from the game a little bit, but talk a little bit about the atmosphere in here tonight. A couple of rivals, ten miles away, yeah. uh, third time meeting this year. It, it was a great environment. Yeah, this atmosphere was crazy. It was crazy. Um, I'm gonna miss it next year. It was, yeah, it was crazy. And then the last thing too. Um, this is the second court storming for the St. Mary student section the last three nights. How does it feel to have the girls going to the state tournament to join you guys down there? Yeah, it's awesome. The first time, it's awesome. It's unheard of. Well, it's a great feeling. Congratulations, Alex. Good Thank luck you. down at the well. Thank you. That was senior guard Alex Schrader joining us. And, and I got class of 2000 alum from Remsen St. Mary's, Justin Rudin. And Justin and I, we had some battles in high school. We ourselves. did, absolutely. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, Appreciate it. The Hawks win this one 49-38. And I asked Kale the question, the third time you guys have met, what were some of the things that you and your dad really wanted to implement? Maybe some different things, or if it's more just making sure that the technique was there and you guys were really sticking to the fundamentals? You know, we really emphasized defense this week, um, it, go leading up to it. We play them twice. It's Like I said, throw the scouting reports out. You don't have to dig in too deep. You know it all already. You know the players. They know them by name. So it's it's just one of those games, and uh, you can't simulate the atmosphere here or anything like that. The emotions running high level or high or low. We told him keep a level headed, and then defense, we really had to try to focus on Keaton Bonderson. I mean, he is one of the best players in the state, and uh, I thought our guys did a great job of recognizing and really trying to make him work for his shots, not give him any easy ones, but really work for it. And I asked the other two as well, when Jackson went out in foul trouble right away in the yep. first half, not only from a defensive perspective, because it seems like you guys mm -hmm. play so well defensively, man-to-man, -man, mm -hmm. help side and everything, what about the offensive presence? Jackson being the leading scorer at almost 16 points tonight. What what were your concerns in that first half, and who were you thinking maybe had to step up for you, or what adjustments did well, you have to make? And that's the beauty part about this team is it doesn't matter whatever night it is. And you know, when you, like I said, the two that you had on here, Alex Schrader and uh, Kale Ortman, stepped up as seniors, and that's what you expect out of them. Ryan Wilman too, Landon Walshman coming in off the bench. It's a big spot for him. And uh, I was happy. We were kind of contemplating on whether you not put him in back in. Well, when, when the lead just kind of stayed or it was like increased for a little bit there, it was to the point where we could get through this and we trust our guys. And, and Jackson has absolute trust in his teammates to go through and get the job done until he is able to come in fresh legs in the second half. And it's funny you say that about Landon because he hit yeah, a huge big three shot. on the far side there yeah. and the sophomore stepping up making a big shot. Yep. So, well, congratulations, yeah, appreciate Coach it. Rudin. Appreciate um, it. Good luck to you guys at the well. Thank you. Love listening to you on here too, man. You do a good job. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Justin. Yep. 49-38, the Rems and St. Mary's Hawks, seven years in a row. They're going to head to the state tournament. We can't emphasize that enough, it seems like. And uh, we will be back with the uh, last of the wrap-up uh, here on the Fuller Digital Solutions post-game show right after this. Our community, it's where we live, it's where we work, and it's where our kids play. At American Bank, we're not just in the community, we're a part of the community, and that's why we are a proud supporter of the St. Mary's Hawks. With our 3 for 3 program, the varsity girls and boys are able to increase the contribution that is made to the St. Mary's Activity Club. Here's to hoping your talent, dedication, and teamwork makes for a slam dunk season. American Bank, achieving success together, member FDIC. It's easier than ever to find the live stream for your team now on fullerdigital.net. Home and away, if we're covering your team, your team's videos are on 
fullerdigital.net. Just click on your school and you'll find the game. Thank you for watching our events and remember, the games are on fullerdigital.net. Welcome back to Lamar's Community High School, the gymnasium here in the Remsen St. Mary's Hawks defeat Galen by a final of 49 to 38. Statistics look like this. Keaton Bonderson had 12 points. Keaton Logan held to seven. Drake DeRocher only with three. Connor Kraft with five and Ryan Augustine with 11. For the Hawks, Alex Schrader with 10. Landon Waldschmidt with three. Hale Ortman, big score on the night with 14. Ryan Wilman had six, Jackson Bunkers had nine, and Colin Holman with seven. Of course, the one of the biggest things in the game tonight, it was a game of runs, and it really was for both teams. We saw uh, a couple of five-point runs either way for both Galen and Remsen St. Mary's, and ultimately, ultimately it was a 14-point huge run by St. Mary's, giving them the lead, and, uh, and, and the Jays only scored one more time uh, or broke the broke that scoring streak, and that that was the last time they scored at 38 points. Uh, Remsen was down 35-30 and went on that 14-point scoring streak, and it was unbelievable. And like I said during the broadcast, that's just a they they've been there before. They know how to win ball games, and and they know how to close those out. And a close game all the way down to the last couple of minutes, and they just made winning play after winning play, finding ways to get inside baskets when. The Jays really struggled on the interior trying to find some an open look. Is the, the Hawks' defense the deciding factor down the stretch as they pulled away and ended the game on that 19-3 run? Any final thoughts, Matt? Ten seniors for the Jays wrap up their careers as Jays, and it was an entertaining uh, entertaining year for, for those Jays. Mike Lango wraps up an 18-year career, and I don't know how much really can – how much more can be said he brought a lot of uh knowledge and somewhat of a stabilizing factor year over year for that jays program you knew that when you played the jays you're going to be playing a stout team take nothing away from saint mary's and and they've had a phenomenal the year this year only two losses on the year but uh congrat- congratulations to the senior lead senior laden uh jays basketball team as as they uh as their season comes to a conclusion here tonight and those seniors for the Jays, a lot of success on the basketball floor over their four-year career and had some success on the football field and baseball diamond as well. Um, a lot of multi-sport athletes. So I'm sure we'll see them during the baseball season yet, some of them certainly. Congratulations to them. We also just want to take a moment to thank all of our sponsors. This a privilege to do it tonight between two Fuller Digital Solutions schools in Remsen, St. Mary's, and Galen Catholic. A ton of local sponsorships in the Remsen and Lamar's communities. We thank all of those local businesses and encourage you to support your patronize those local businesses and allows us to continue to have these streams going forward for future sporting events and, and big ones at that as well as we're able to do it here tonight. For Tim Holmes with Matt and Mason Schilling, that's going to do it and wrap up our video season of the uh, Iowa High School basketball. On the boys' side of things, I should say, Fuller Digital Solutions, the premier streaming service for Northwest Iowa, Southeast South Dakota, and Northeast Nebraska. It was a pleasure bringing you ball games this winter, and we'll look forward to seeing you guys here in the summer months. Have a nice evening.